Hello my friends and welcome back to the You Can Do TV channel. In this video, we will explore the whole process from recycling aluminum scrap to manufacturing alloy wheel. The first stage of the recycling process is the collection and sorting of scrap aluminum. Once the scrap aluminum is sorted, it is loaded to 4T capacity mobile vibratory charging machine, which is responsible for compacting the scrap aluminum into a more manageable form. This machine uses vibratory forces to compress the scrap aluminum into dense and uniform pieces, making it easier to handle and process. The compacted scrap aluminum is transferred to the 15 TTR 12 tilt rotary furnace, which is the heart of the recycling process. This furnace is used to melt the scrap aluminum, which is a crucial step for purifying and refining the aluminum. The furnace is equipped with oxy fuel firing, which means that the oxygen and fuel gases are carefully controlled to provide optimal conditions for melting the scrap aluminum. The furnace can melt up 15 tons of scrap aluminum at a time and produces a molten aluminum stream that is ready for further processing. Once the scrap aluminum has been melted, it is transferred to the 15T Lipsis side tilting holding furnace with porous plug gas injection. This furnace is used to remove molten aluminum by removing impurities and other unwanted materials. The porous plug gas injection allows for the controlled introduction of gases into the furnace, which reacts with the impurities to remove them from the aluminum stream. The furnace also tilts to allow the impurities to be poured off, leaving behind a pure and refined aluminum stream. The next step is the casting of the refined aluminum into ingots, which is done using the 220 mold ingot casting machine with indirect water cooling. The machine casts the refined aluminum into a mold, which is then cooled using indirect water cooling. This process solidifies the aluminum into a solid ingot that can be easily handled and transported. The scrap aluminum recycling plant is equipped with air pollution control and continuous emission monitoring to ensure that it operates in an environmentally friendly manner. This includes systems for controlling and filtering emissions from the furnaces and casting machines, as well as monitoring the levels of various pollutants in the air. This helps to minimize the impact of the recycling process on the environment and ensures that the plant operates in compliance with all relevant environmental regulations.
The indirect water cooling ensures that the ingots are cooled evenly and slowly, which prevents any cracks or other defects from forming. Once the ingots have been cast and cooled, they are transferred to the robot ingot stacking line with cooling quench. This line is responsible for stacking the ingots in an orderly manner and applying a cooling quench to further improve the quality of the aluminum. The cooling quench is a process where the ingots are rapidly cooled in a controlled manner, which helps to improve the mechanical properties of the aluminum and increase its strength and durability. Alloy Wheel Manufacturing Process GMP Italia is a renowned Italian wheel manufacturer known for producing high-quality alloy wheels. The casting process starts with the preparation of the mold. The liquid aluminum is poured into the mold under low pressure. The low pressure ensures that the aluminum fills the mold evenly, reducing the chances of air pockets forming in the wheel. After the mold is filled, the wheel is allowed to cool and solidify for a specified amount of time. After the casting process, the cast wheel is cooled using water to ensure it solidifies properly. The cooling process helps to prevent any structural defects from forming in the wheel and to maintain the desired microstructure of the aluminum alloy. Once the wheel has cooled, it undergoes a thorough quality check to ensure it meets the required specifications. Qualified alloy wheels will be moved to the next step. After the casting process is completed, the wheel goes through the machining phase, where the rough edges are smoothed and the wheel is given its final shape. GMP Italia uses state-of-the-art CNC machines to ensure precise machining and consistent quality across all its products. The next phase of the manufacturing process is tilt milling. In this stage, the wheel is placed on a tilt milling machine, which rotates the wheel while milling it to a precise finish. This step is critical in ensuring the wheel has a perfect balance and smooth finish.
After tilt milling, the wheel goes through the painting phase. The wheel is given a high quality paint finish to protect it from corrosion and provide a sleek appearance. GMP Italia uses environmentally friendly paint technology to minimize its impact on the environment. The final stage of the manufacturing process is the final control, where the wheel is thoroughly inspected for quality and compliance with the required specifications. GMP Italia uses advanced measurement equipment, such as 3D laser scanning machines, to ensure the wheel meets the highest standards of quality and performance. The video showcases the aluminum gravity casting process at Fonderia Tironi, a company with a rich history dating back to 1974. Aluminum gravity casting is a process used to produce high-quality aluminum components by pouring molten aluminum into a mold cavity without the use of external pressure. In this method, the molten aluminum is mold, which is typically made of sand or metal. As the aluminum cools and solidifies, it takes the shape of the mold cavity, forming the desired component. One of the key advantages of aluminum gravity casting is its ability to create complex shapes with intricate details and tight tolerances. This process is particularly well suited for producing small to medium sized parts with excellent surface finish and dimensional accuracy. Additionally, aluminum gravity casting is a cost-effective manufacturing technique, as it requires relatively low tooling and equipment costs compared to other casting methods. It also offers shorter lead times and higher production rates, making it an attractive option for a wide range of industries, including automotive, aerospace, and consumer goods. One of the hallmarks of the workshop's operations is its dedication to technological innovation. The workshop has invested significantly in cutting-edge technologies to streamline production processes and enhance product quality. For instance, their automatic casting system is equipped with two anthropomorphic robots, enabling precise and efficient casting operations. Additionally, the automated deburing island not only improves efficiency but also contributes to enhanced workplace safety. Furthermore, the workshop places a strong emphasis on collaboration with customers during the design phase. By utilizing 3D modeling, they work closely with clients to develop molds that meet specific requirements and optimize the final product's quality. This collaborative approach extends to the monitoring of external production phases, ensuring that quality standards are maintained throughout the manufacturing process. Investment casting, also known as precision casting or lost wax casting, 
is a meticulous manufacturing process used to create metal components with intricate shapes and high precision. The process begins with the production of wax patterns, which are exact replicas of the desired final castings. Injection dyes are loaded into a wax press, and special pattern wax is injected into the dyes. The wax quickly solidifies within the dyes, forming disposable replicas of the desired castings. For high volume production, multiple cavity tools are employed to enhance productivity and reduce costs, ensuring efficiency in the wax pattern production phase. Once the wax patterns are produced, they are assembled onto a feed system known as a sprue. This sprue, made from reclaimed wax, not only holds the wax patterns but also forms a pathway for the molten metal during casting. The assembly of wax patterns onto the sprue forms what is called a tree. This tree structure allows for multiple wax patterns to be cast simultaneously, increasing efficiency in production and ensuring uniformity among the castings. The tree structure, comprising wax patterns and the sprue, is then encased in a seamless ceramic shell mold. This ceramic shell mold is formed by dipping the tree into a slurry of ceramic material. Multiple layers of ceramic are applied, gradually increasing in coarseness until the shell is fully formed. The ceramic shell mold provides the necessary structure to withstand the thermal stresses of the casting process, ensuring the integrity of the final cast components. After the ceramic shell mold is formed, the wax patterns and sprue are removed through either steam autoclaving or flash fire dewaxing. The melted wax is drained out, leaving behind a hollow ceramic shell that is ready for casting. The ceramic shell molds are reheated to further strengthen them and prepare them for the thermal stress of casting. Meanwhile, the metal to be cast is melted and checked for proper chemistry to ensure the desired material properties. Once the metal reaches the correct pouring temperature, it is poured into the ceramic shell molds. The metal completely fills the cavities of the mold, taking on the geometric shape of the wax patterns. Any internal details are formed by soluble wax or ceramic cores, which are surrounded by the molten metal during casting. As the metal cools and solidifies, it forms the final cast components within the ceramic shell molds, maintaining the intricate details and precision of the wax patterns. After casting, the ceramic shell molds are removed from the castings using various cleaning methods, such as blasting, vibration, or chemical cleaning. The castings are then separated from the sprue and undergo final cleaning to expose their smooth and detailed surfaces. They are ready for any additional processing, such as heat treatment, non-destructive testing, NDT, machining, plating, or other value-added processes. Each casting may be engraved with its identification for quality control purposes, ensuring traceability throughout the manufacturing process. Die casting is a highly efficient and versatile manufacturing process utilized by Illumina to produce high-quality parts with intricate designs. At the heart of this process lies the tooling, which plays a pivotal role in ensuring the production of flawless die casting parts.
This facility's in-house tooling design capabilities encompass a range of components including die casting tools, trimming tools, machining fixtures, gauges, and more. Utilizing advanced simulation software, the design validation of die casting tools is meticulously executed to optimize performance and minimize defects. For machines up to 1,050 tons, the facility undertakes the production of die casting tools internally, while larger size tools are sourced from trusted sub suppliers adhering to design specifications. Rapid prototyping is facilitated through internal production, allowing for swift iteration and refinement of tool designs. Equipped with state of the art CNC machining centers, EDM machines, surface grinders, and other precision equipment, the tool shop ensures the precise fabrication of tooling components to exact specifications. The foundry utilizes three different alloy types in serial production, with each alloy melted in dedicated shaft furnaces to prevent contamination and ensure consistency. Stringent quality controls, including density index and K-mold tests, are regularly performed to maintain the integrity of the melted alloy. Automated die casting cells form the backbone of foundry operations, with shot parameters meticulously controlled and recorded for every cycle. Integration with the ERP system enables real-time monitoring of overall equipment effectiveness, OEE, enhancing operational efficiency and traceability. Environmental sustainability is a core value at here reflected in investments in ionizer air filtration units for dye casting cells and a centralized oil treatment center for the filtration of residual oils. Machining processes, both simple and complex, are seamlessly integrated into the production workflow to deliver finished products meeting the highest quality standards. Crafting the Saarinen Oval Table Base, an iconic piece of modern furniture, involves meticulous processes, notably the casting of aluminum. The base's sleek and timeless design owes much to the casting technique used in its creation. Firstly, the process commences with the preparation of the cast aluminum. Aluminum, known for its lightweight yet durable properties, is melted down into a molten state, reaching temperatures exceeding 660.3 degrees Celsius, 1220.6 degrees Fahrenheit. This molten metal becomes the medium through which the base takes shape. The molten aluminum is then carefully poured into a pre-made mold designed to replicate the intricate curves and lines of the Saarinen Oval Table Base. The mold is typically crafted from a durable material capable of withstanding the extreme heat of the molten metal. As the aluminum fills the mold, it begins to take on the form of the base, capturing every detail of the design with precision. Once the mold is filled and the aluminum has cooled and solidified, the next step is the unmolding process. This involves carefully removing the cast aluminum piece from the mold without causing any damage to its structure. The first crucial step is the preparation of the alloy bath, which involves purifying the bath to eliminate impurities. This meticulous process is fundamental to ensuring the final product's quality and integrity. 
Following the preparation of the alloy bath is the degasification operation. This involves removing trapped air from the molten aluminum using a sodium metal tablet. By eliminating air pockets, the risk of microporosity and irregularities in the cast pieces is significantly reduced. The pouring procedure is another essential aspect of the manufacturing process. Timing and method are critical during this step, as they directly impact the quality of the final product. Proper pouring ensures uniform filling of molds and precise casting. In addition to maintaining quality standards, the workshop focuses on product differentiation. This emphasis on uniqueness through design, features, and quality standards sets the company apart in the market and attracts discerning customers. Producing copper tubes from billet copper involves several essential steps. Initially, the billet copper is heated to a suitable temperature to soften it for processing. Then, the softened copper billets are extruded through a shaped die in an extrusion machine to form long hollow tubes with the desired diameter and thickness. Subsequently, the extruded tubes undergo an annealing process, where they are heated and slowly cooled to relieve internal stresses and enhance ductility and machinability. Following annealing, the tubes may undergo further shaping through drawing, where they are pulled through progressively smaller dies to refine their dimensions and surface finish. After shaping, the tubes are cut to the desired lengths and may undergo additional finishing processes such as deburing or polishing. The production process of longitudinally high-frequency induction HFI, welded steel tube and pipe, coil handling. Raw steel coils are received and unloaded, ready for processing. Strip preparation. Strip accumulator, continuous welding. Strips are fed into the accumulator to ensure a continuous supply for the welding process. Strip preforming. The continuous steel strip is preformed into the desired shape to facilitate the subsequent pipe forming process. Pipe shaping in the environment of the welding process. The pipe is further shaped and adjusted as it moves through the welding process environment. Scraping off the external weld bead, pre-welding. Any excess material or irregularities on the external surface of the pipe are removed before welding. HFI welding. The high-frequency induction welding process joins the edges of the strip to form a continuous longitudinal weld. Weld annealing unit. The welded pipe passes through an annealing unit to relieve internal stresses and improve the mechanical properties of the weld. Air cooling line. The annealed pipe is cooled using controlled airflow. Air cooling line with temperature measurement. Pipe string cutting unit. The long pipe is cut into shorter lengths according to customer specifications. Pipe straightening machine. The cut pipes undergo straightening to ensure they meet dimensional tolerances. Finishing line. Various finishing processes are conducted, including pipe length measurement and water ejection. Water ejector and ultrasonic pipe end test. Pipes are subjected to water ejection and ultrasonic testing to ensure end quality. Pipe turning for pipe end testing. Pipes are turned to facilitate end testing procedures. Quality assurance. Several quality checks are performed throughout the process, including diameter, wall thickness, web edge, and ovality measurements. Quality identification number. Ultrasonic longitudinal weld inspection. Ultrasonic testing is conducted to inspect the integrity of the longitudinal weld. Internal marking, stamping station. 
Pipes are marked or stamped internally for identification purposes. Cross-transfer unit. Pipes are transferred between different process stages using cross-transfer units. Coupling process. Online blasting. Finishing line entry end. Plastic coating facility. Pipes enter the finishing line to undergo plastic coating for corrosion protection. Entry end of pipe blasting unit. Pipes are introduced for surface blasting to remove rust and contaminants. Area between pipe blasting units. Transitional space between blasting units for pipe movement or staging. Delivery end of pipe blasting unit. Pipes exit the blasting unit, prepared for coating. Blast compound removal by internal lands. Internal cleaning of pipes after blasting to remove residual debris. Roller table entry end of plastic coating line. Pipes enter the plastic coating line smoothly via roller tables. Inductive pipe heating unit of plastic coating line. Automatic pipe joint covering. Before powder coating. Automated covering of joints to prevent coating buildup before powder coating. Hose extrusion for plastic coating. Coating is applied using a hose extrusion process. Water cooling line. Pipes are cooled after the coating process. Longitudinal ink jet marking. Markings are applied using ink jet technology for identification and traceability. Ink jet quality data application. Quality data is applied to pipes using ink jet technology. Pipe string cutting unit. Facility for cutting long pipes into desired lengths. Pipe end finishing. Process to refine and prepare pipe ends for subsequent use or connection. Cross transfer to pipe end finishing. Mechanism for transferring pipes to the area where end finishing occurs. Internal pipe check. Inspection of pipes interior to ensure quality and integrity. Attachment of protective end caps. Pipe layer handling. Pipes are handled and prepared for transportation in layers. Loading of pipe transport trolley. Pipes are loaded onto transport trolleys for in-plant handling. In-plant pipe handling. Pipes are transported within the plant for further processing or storage. Layer-wise loading of railcar. Pipes are loaded onto railcars in layers for transportation to customers. Gantry crane for railcar loading. Gantry cranes are used to load railcars, securing the load for transport. The production process at Manus Munroran Work GmbH in Zeitine for seamless tubes is a meticulously planned and executed series of steps aimed at producing high-quality products efficiently and safely. Let's delve deeper into each stage. Block preparation. Blocks weighing up to 65 kilograms and ranging in outside diameter from 17.2 to 133 millimeters are sourced from various steel brands. These blocks are carefully selected to meet the specific requirements of the desired seamless tubes. Heating in Turner Oven the selected blocks are then heated in a Turner oven. This oven is a remarkable piece of equipment, boasting an outside diameter of 24 meters and an occupancy width of 4 meters. It has the capacity to process up to 60 tons of blocks per hour. The heating process is crucial, as it prepares the blocks for further manipulation. Oxidation removal. After heating for approximately 3 hours at temperatures soaring up to 1300 degrees Celsius, the blocks develop a special layer due to oxidation. This layer needs to be removed to ensure the surface quality of the block material. 
Pressurized water is utilized for this purpose, effectively stripping away the oxidation layer. Occupational safety measures. Throughout the production process, strict adherence to occupational safety guidelines is paramount. State-of-the-art technical systems are employed to ensure the safety of all employees. These systems, coupled with comprehensive safety protocols, create a secure working environment. Horror Rolling Mill One of the distinctive features of the Zeitine plant is its Horror Rolling Mill. This mill incorporates a three-roller fright roller lay with a subsequent shock bench process. The thorn rod, subjected to peak forces up to 40 tons, is pulled out of the apartment block in this process. A sophisticated transport system, comprising roll gears and manipulators, facilitates the movement of the thorn rod. Advance bank operations. The advance bank is where significant deformation of the workpiece occurs. Here, the rod undergoes stretching and reduction in scope, resulting in a magnifying glass effect. This process is essential for shaping the rod to the desired specifications before it enters the rolling mill. Rolling mill operations. In the rolling mill, the rod undergoes further reduction and stretching through driven rollers. This process allows for precise control over the dimensions and quality of the final product. The length and scope of the rod are meticulously adjusted to produce seamless tubes of varying lengths. Cooling and transportation. Once the seamless tubes are produced, they are cooled and transported to storage facilities. These tubes are then ready for distribution to various industries, where they will serve a multitude of purposes. The production process of plastic wood involves several steps to transform raw materials into the final product. Here's a detailed outline of the process. Get the raw material ready. The process begins with preparing the raw materials. This typically involves mixing polypropylene with pigments and other additives such as UV absorbing agents, anti-aging agents, and foaming agents. The ratio of these components is adjusted based on clients' demands. Temperature control. The prepared material is then poured into the production machine, where the temperature is carefully controlled to ensure optimal processing conditions. High temperature extrusion. Once the material is in the machine, it undergoes high-temperature extrusion. 
This involves pushing the material through molds at elevated temperatures to give it the desired shape and structure. Cooling. After extrusion, the formed plastic wood is immediately transferred to a cooling bath. This rapid cooling process helps to solidify the material and maintain its shape. High pressure flattening. Next, the plastic wood undergoes high pressure flattening. This step ensures uniform thickness and smoothness across the surface of the material. Automatic cutting. Once flattened, the plastic wood is cut into various lengths according to client specifications. Automated cutting machines ensure precision and efficiency in this step. Washing. Before packaging, the finished plastic wood undergoes a washing process to remove any dust or debris accumulated during production. This ensures that the final product is clean and ready for use. Brushing and embossing. To enhance the appearance and texture of the plastic wood, brushing and embossing techniques are employed. These processes create various effects on the surface, giving the material a more natural and appealing look. Additionally, aluminum tubes may be added to certain pieces to increase strength and bearing capacity. Packing. Finally, the finished plastic wood is packed into cartons, often with a protective PE foam cover to prevent damage during transportation and storage. The packaging is designed to ensure that the product reaches the customer in optimal condition. The extrusion process commences with aluminum logs or billets, which typically measure 22 feet in length and weigh an average of 12,200 pounds. These logs come in diameters of 7, 8, and 10 inches, and are made from alloys such as 6,063, 605, 6,463, and 6,061. First, the billet is placed into an oven where it is heated to approximately 900 degrees Fahrenheit bringing it to a plastic state without melting. Upon exiting the oven, the billet is sheared to an extrudable length, typically around 30 inches depending on the desired shape. The hot 30-inch billet is then fed into extrusion presses by an extrusion loader. A large ram applies up to 3,000 tons of pressure, squeezing the aluminum through a steel extrusion die. As the aluminum passes through the die, it takes on the shape of the profile within and emerges as a long stock length aluminum extrusion. Throughout the process, digital monitoring and data storage are employed to develop extrusion recipes for specific profiles. An extrusion puller guides the extrusions along a runout table to prevent twisting and touching, while cooling fans bring the parts to room temperature. 
After cooling, the aluminum extrusions undergo post-artificial aging to achieve desired hardness, such as T5 or T6 temper. Various cooling methods, including water quenching, may be employed to attain specific strength tempers. Once extruded to the desired length, the pieces are separated from the continuous process using special cutting equipment. Subsequently, the extrusions are transferred to a cooling table for further cooling and then stretched to remove distortions. The stretching operation straightens the aluminum to its non-distorted condition, ensuring all dimensions and tolerances meet specifications. Finally, the extrusions are cut into predetermined stock lengths using a finish saw, typically 20 feet or less.